Um, big picture first. Uh, we want to get to your stock picks in a moment. But uh, are you constructive or cautious for the, for the headline uh, equity markets for the second half of this year? I think they'll be up. And the reason being, although the market's expensive at 23 times earnings on the S&P, um, the rates are so low. The 10 years around 142. The Fed's going to be totally accommodative. As I wrote you in my synopsis, the punch bowl is still there. And I don't think the Fed's going to raise rates for a while because they want to keep, you know, keep the United States government in the game. So I'm mildly bullish, even though I think valuations are stretched at this point. What about uh, what about Fed tightening when it comes? Will that be a problem, or are you just not expecting it anytime soon? It's not going to happen soon. But it's interesting. I looked at the time of the Lehman debacle in April 2007. The Fed balance sheet was 870 billion. As we speak today, it's 8.1 trillion. I mean, it's getting out of hand. And of course, the federal. The accumulated federal debt's over $28 trillion, selling over 1.3 times nominal GDP. It's the highest index we've ever had since the end of World War II. So there's a lot of cautionary winds down the pike. But in the short term, I think the Fed's going to keep, you know, keep its quantitative easing, essentially. So that's yeah. why people are ro they're rotating back into the large cap stocks. It's interesting, as you look at the last quarter, um, the 1,000 growth and the NASDAQ were up over 11 percent, respectively. And you look at the small and mid-cap indices, like the Russell 2000, 2500, they're 4 and a half, 5 percent. They've been left in the dust. So the old favorites, which are cap heavily cap-weighted, the NASDAQ, the top five stocks, is 42 percent weighting. And in the S&P, the top five stocks is 21 percent. There's rotation back into the large-cap growth things. Right. And, and you see it in the fact that we're making record highs on the S&P, the Dow and the Nasdaq and, and not the small caps, not the Russell 2000. So, so what yes. of the value trade, Scott? Is that, is that over if you think the Fed is just going to be in the game for a long time and it's back to growth? Well, well, we try not to do that. We've had a very good year. We're up between 24 and 25 percent and we don't veer from our strategy. I've been in business 41 years. Value will out. So what I try to do, as you know, Sarah, is to buy companies with high returns on equity that have growing earnings, but it's still at low multiples. We're not going to pay a 23 multiple. So if you're interested, I got a couple of picks for you today. Yeah, give us uh, give us the first one in steel. They're always ones in we steel. never hear about and are very unsexy. <laughs> Yes, but it's a good play on infrastructure, especially if Mr. Biden gets the bill through Congress. It's a little company with a market cap of about $630 million. They're in Mount Airy, North Carolina, just south of the Virginia border. And they're the largest United States manufacturer of steel wire. And that goes into all sorts of concrete. So basically, 36% of it is concrete strand and the other is welded wire. So it goes into mundane things like bridges, water and sewage treatment, highways, roads, et cetera. And so it's a basically a pure play. They have the highest gross margins they've had since 2016. The gross margin in the last quarter was over 20 percent, which is a recovery high. And the stock right now is approximately $32 a share. There's a little over $3 a share in cash. There's absolutely no debt. And I think they're going to make around 270 this year. So it puts the multiple at roughly 10.8 times earnings. And you have nice acceleration. I figure for the next six months, because they have a fiscal year in September, they'll do about $1.50 to about 75 cents a quarter. So I don't think you have a lot of risk with a debt-free balance sheet selling at a 10.8 multiple. Stock's shooting higher as, as you make your case, Scott. It's up 4%. It was down 1% before you, you pitched it. You, does, so it doesn't need to have the infrastructure deal pass in Washington for, for this to well, be a good Well, they're still doing well, but, you know, it's still a cheap stock. But the bottom line is you've got an infrastructure bill, and this stock can rally. It was over 41 earlier in the year, and it's pulled back, and we use this as an opportunity to buy it here in the low 30s. Let's, uh, let's have your other pick that you've got today, Scott. Western Digital. Exactly. Well, you probably know this is basically it's a disk drive company and it's solid state drives and flash memory. So they got all the bases covered. And every one of their market segments, they're basically number two in share, right behind Seagate and drives and slightly behind Samsung and SSDs and also with their joint venture with Toshiba and flash memory. The street estimate's a little higher than mine. It's a 
a fiscal June 30th year. We're looking out to June 30th, 2022. Um, the estimates are on the street about $9. I use eight sixty five. dollars The gross margins are lifting about 32%. We just were at a conference with them. They expect to take out 15% in the cost structure over the coming year. They generate nothing but cash year in, year out. They bought back um, over a billion eight in their own stock in the last three years. And so with a $70 stock, 865 in earnings, you got an 8.1 multiple. They'll do prospectively 23% return on equity. It's an investment grade credit right at the bottom of triple B minus. Um, as I say, strong free cash flow. They'll do over a quarter of a billion in free cash next year. So, you know, most tech Thanks stocks are selling 15, 20, 25 multiples. This is awfully cheap at an 8 PE. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.